I'm Zara. And I'm Bradley. Today we're talking about preparing for energies. So Bradley, what is a curator and what do they do? What a curator is has changed a lot over the years. Um, the word curator actually originally means to care for and the traditional role of a curator was very much to look after art. So in museums, on racks like the ones behind us, the curator's job was to make sure that it was well kept um, and they would do research about it and make sure that it was saved for tens or hundreds of years. That's why we still have art from hundreds of years ago available today. Um, but over the years, it's changed a lot. A contemporary curator like myself is about caring for historical works, but it's also about working with artists and helping them to make new works. So here at Hodder, our job is to work with artists to develop work to put on exhibitions in our spaces. Well, what do curators look for in an artwork? It can be so many different things. Um, and I think that's because today art can be so many different things. It can be paintings, it can be photography, it can be sculpture, but it could also be video or interactive digital works or installations. And so there's a whole wonderful world of artworks out there. Um, so what we're looking for is just the best examples of those different forms and people who you can tell have really worked on the techniques and how they make work. Um, whether it be a great technical painting or a great technical photography, but can also just be work that speaks really directly to the audience and that speaks about what's going on in the world, whether it be work about local stories or work about Queensland stories or work about Australian stories or work that transcends the country and just work around about being a human. So it can be so many different things, but we're looking for the best examples of people's practice and and where you can tell that they just had to make that artwork. How do students get their artwork into the exhibition Energies? So Energies is a show uh, that brings together artists from right across the Gold Coast. And the way it works is that students can work with their teachers and their schools to develop artworks to submit for the show. Um, and so their teachers and their schools will put forward artists who've made this work. And then myself and my colleagues um, and industry professionals, so actual artists and art teachers, will get together and review these submissions from right across the city. And we'll select works that we think best represents the amazing diversity of work that's being made. Um, and we'll put that together for the annual exhibition. What might an artist put in an artist statement? It doesn't have to tell us everything. I think if it can have one really simple idea um, that is like an access point to the work that tells us what is at the middle of this work. I think a single idea that can be told in 60 to 80 words is better than a whole page that tries to tell you everything. Um, it leaves space for people to have their own opinion and to work out for themselves what an artwork is doing. Um, but it gives everyone that access point to the work. So I think find that core idea to your work and put it in really simple language. Um, it's much more convincing to tell us something compelling in a simple way than to make something seem overly complicated just for the sake of it. So direct and to the point, that's what I like. I'm Sarah, I'm the Registration Coordinator here at Hodder Gallery. And I'm Sarah, the Collections Officer. We always look forward to receiving artwork for energies. So Sarahs, how would you usually prepare artwork for display? Well, there are several different ways that we would expect artwork to be um, display ready when we receive it, and we can take you through those now. If you're submitting a work on canvas, make sure that these little chocks are in the slots on the side here. Well, why do you need those? These help to stabilise this canvas so it doesn't warp. Once you've inserted the chocks into the back of the canvas to make the work stable, the next step is to install the D-rings on the back so that we could hang it on the wall. 
To install the D-rings, first we measure down the back of the canvas, about 10 to 15 centimetres down, and we make a little mark so we know where to drill. If you've got an artwork on paper, not on canvas, there are usually two ways that they get displayed. One is that they get sent in unframed, in which case we would pin them to the wall. The second way is that you would frame them and we would prepare them much the same way that we would prepare them if they were a work on canvas. When you're cleaning the inside of a frame, you never directly apply the Windex to the glass. You make sure that you apply it to a soft cloth, like a microfiber cloth, and then you gently and carefully clean inside the surface of the first pixel glass. After the backing's been put back on, bend the fletches back in place. As you can see on this frame, there are no dents, chips, gouges or scratches. We want your artwork to look the best that it can when it's on display here at our gallery. How does your artwork look when it's dropped off? It's a great question. First of all, you want to make sure you have a clean, even surface that doesn't have any objects or debris that can harm your artwork. You lay out some bubble wrap on the clean surface and then lay your canvas face first down. We hope that's been really helpful. Thanks for watching.